it's Becky. I'm back today with a really fun and exciting video that I'm happy to be doing with Kimmy from She's in Her Apron. This is a collab video with her and in case you've been living under a rock and you don't know who Kimmy is, uh, her channel is really awesome because she does a lot of organizational and cleaning videos. She does a lot of um, kind of like carpool chats she calls it where she just sits in the car and kind of talks to you and you really get to feel like you know her because she is so relatable and funny. She's got a really funny sense of humor and I like her channel because she teaches you how to do things like how to organize and how to clean and how to plan your day but she also shows you when things do not work out well for her. She shows you her messy kitchen or her living room or what it looks like after she cleans out a closet. So I think that just really makes her relatable and makes it feel like you almost know her and you kind of forget sometimes that you don't. So I love her channel and I'm really excited to be doing this collab with her. This video that I'm doing with Kimmy is all about how to be a confident mom. And I've had some people request me to do a video about this and so I thought Kimmy was the perfect person to do it with me because she is so honest and relatable and down to earth. I knew that she'd be the perfect person to do this with because she has a way of teaching you and motivating you without making you feel bad about yourself. So she's the perfect person to do this and I'm really excited to see her answers. So make sure after you watch this video you go on over to her channel and watch her video and I'll link her channel down below so you can watch the video that she's doing with me and also all the other great videos that she has on her channel. As I said the topic of this video is how to be a confident mom or how to have momfidence. There's so many parts to a mom's daily life and with confidence as well, I feel like there's quite a few aspects of what makes a mom feel confident. But I've narrowed it down to three and I think they're probably the three most typical that a lot of moms struggle with. They are um, with their confidence in being a housewife and homemaker, their confidence in their physical appearance, and their confidence in the job that they're, that they're doing raising their children. The first one being your confidence in being a homemaker or a housewife. So the first thing that to, to always remind yourself is you're never going to get everything done, so don't try. You'll just exhaust yourself and feel like a failure every day. So just remind yourself it's not you can't do everything in a day. I really thrive on lists and goals to keep me organized, to keep me motivated, and to keep my, my thoughts and my priorities on paper. Because if I don't write things down and I don't kind of make time for things, then the whole day just kind of blows up in my face and I don't get anything done because I'm overwhelmed or I don't really know what to do and I kind of just kind of hop around doing little bits and pieces of everything and actually accomplishing nothing. There's something really rewarding and fun for me about being able to scratch something off your to-do list. Even on the weekends if I make my husband a little to-do list and he, for him and he does them, I kind of sometimes sneak in and mark it off his list. I know that's terrible to steal his you know, his right to be able to mark off his own list, but it's just so fun. So I love doing that, but I think it does really make you feel good. And I used to type my to-do list and I would just kind of erase them, you know, whenever I got them done, but that didn't seem as rewarding to me. I really like to write it down and I really like to be able to mark it off. So if you don't already make to-do lists and goal lists, I would really encourage you to do that. YouTube is a great place to find all different types of videos of people showing how they organize their days and how they organize their planners and their to-do lists. And it doesn't have to be a big fancy planner that you have to have. It can literally be just a piece of notebook paper if that's what you have. And I do have a planner, but every day to make my to-do list, I do just use a piece of notebook paper and, you know, kind of prioritize my day on there. So if you're making to-do lists, make sure that you prioritize your to-do list in order of importance of things that have to get done that go at the very top and things that maybe aren't as important down towards the bottom. So that way you know even if you don't get everything done on your list, you've at least done the most important things first because they are at the top of your list. Sometimes I even schedule playtime with my kids and alone time with my husband just because I know that the day can so easily get away from you and you get so caught up in all the things that you have to do, you don't necessarily make time for the things that you want to do like spend time with your family or your kids or have a game night or play a, you know, go outside and play with your kids at the park, something like that. So. I do actually sometimes schedule that as well, just not because I have to schedule it like, oh, it's 415 kids, we have to play, but it's just a visual reminder to make time in my day for all the, all the people that are important to me. I also write down to exercise every day, even though I don't forget, um, it's still, again, that visual reminder that, oh yes, that has to be something that's a priority that gets put into my day at the top of the list with, a, with all the other things that are important because otherwise I could always say I don't have time to exercise because I've got to go do this or that but I put it on my list and I would, re I would feel really bad if, I, well, if, the day went, if the day ended and I didn't get the things at the top of my list done. I would feel bad if I had to carry that over to the next day. 
So I make sure that I write it down so that I can feel good and accomplished when I do those things and I can cross them off. But whether you make lists or not, whether you work outside the home, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, whatever your situation is, I think a, a thing to keep telling yourself and reminding yourself of is let whatever you got done today be enough. That's really simple, but it's a huge, a huge thing to wrap your brain around because you could sit there and think about all the things you didn't get done and feel really bad about yourself. But if you think about all the things that you did accomplish, then and, and let that be enough. Be, be able to rest and relax in the fact that what you did today was enough. There's always tomorrow to do more things. The number two on my list of how to be a confident mom is in your physical appearance. And as much as we always say, you know, it doesn't matter what you look like and all that stuff, which it doesn't, I think just in general though, how well you take care of yourself really tells yourself something. It sends a message to yourself about whether or not you're worthy of spending time on and effort on or are you spending all your time and effort on everybody else and letting yourself just be completely neglected? Like I mentioned, I put exercise on my to-do list pretty much every day. I exercise usually at least five days a week, sometimes six, sometimes seven. I don't do seven so much anymore. I usually at least take Saturday or Sunday off. But pretty much I'm exercising five or six days a week. So I write that on my to-do list every day because it is important to me. It is a priority and it needs to be towards the top of my list along with a lot of other things that I feel belong at the top of my list because they're a priority. I am a priority just like every other member of my family is. So I do put that on my to-do list. Taking care of your physical appearance really is a huge factor in your own self-confidence. How you feel about yourself as a woman and as a mom and as a wife. Um, and when you, you know, you just, I just think you feel better about yourself when you take care of yourself. No matter what size or shape that you are, what level of fitness you are and what your fitness goals might be, take care of the you that you are right now and whether you're the size you want to be forever or not or if you've already reached your goal weight and you're fine with your size but whatever your size dress nicely to fit your body even if you stay home all day long and you don't go anywhere at least change out of your pjs don't stay in your pajamas all day get some nice yoga pants and some nice shirts that will fit you nicely not your husband's old sloppy worn out grass stained t-shirt even though that might be comfortable get yourself some nice pants to wear Something that's comfortable to wear around the house to clean in, that's appropriate to walk to the mailbox in, and you're not embarrassed if the neighbor sees you and you're hiding behind the trash can. You know, something that's decent that if someone comes to the door, that you're wearing something that's put together and not completely wrinkled that you pulled out of the ironing basket. You know, get yourself some nice things to wear out and get yourself some nice, thing, nice things that you can feel comfortable but confident in wearing when you're at home. Same thing with your hair and makeup. Whether you plan to go anywhere that day or not, at least do you know your basic skincare routine and pull your hair back or do something with your hair to get it kind of out of your face and making it look nice. If you do wear makeup, sometimes it's a little harder to put on a full face in the morning. Sometimes you have to do it in stages and that's fine. You know, I used to put on my face makeup um, and then I would do my eye makeup later or my hair later, you know, kind of break it up into bits and pieces. Depending on how old your kids are and how much time you have in the morning, that's kind of a different situation for everybody. But I would still recommend at least getting up, brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, washing your face and doing your basic skin care so that you aren't, again, embarrassed if somebody comes to the door or the neighbor comes over and asks you to babysit really quick. You're not wearing like stained pajamas and your hair looks crazy. You at least look pulled together and presentable. For me, I know personally, I just feel more confident and motivated in general to do anything when I'm not just kind of lounging around in my pajamas and I actually have on something I could wear um, comfortably and get some cleaning done. I just find myself more motivated that to do, you know, when I do that. So I highly recommend that. Also making exercise, again with exercise, but making it part of your daily routine. Whether you're trying to lose weight or not, or you're trying to maintain, um, I think in general, it's just good for everybody. It's good for mood boosting and stress relief and of course your health and all that great stuff. And for me, even if even though exercise has nothing to do with cleaning my house, whenever I have made time to exercise every day, or at least every day, almost every day, I feel more motivated in all aspects of my life. I feel more confident. I feel more productive and proud of myself. You know, I have that sense of accomplishment that I did something that was good for me, that was just for me that I feel good about. And so I feel like that's a really important thing to add into your daily life, whether you wanna lose weight or not. So try to do something physical every day. Take your kids for a walk, take the dog for a walk, go to the park, play outside. You don't have to just you know, do a two hour exercise routine or you don't have to go to the gym. There are so many great exercise videos on YouTube that are completely free. You can pretty much accomplish any 
health and fitness goal that you have by watching those free YouTube videos and maybe have a couple sets of dumbbells. I really love the fitness blender videos on YouTube. Uh, they do have programs you can purchase, but they have like over 400 videos on YouTube that are free. Um, and they have all different levels of intensity. They have um, little quick videos. If you've only got 10 minutes, they have some that are like an hour and a half. I mean, they offer so many different varieties of workouts for you that I've been using their their videos now pretty religiously for this past six months or six months or so. And I've seen really great results with them because I lost 30 pounds, but then I was like, okay, now what do I do? And I knew I still had a lot of toning that I wanted to work on. So I've been doing a lot of their toning videos and their cardio toning kind of mixture videos. And I've been seeing some really great results with that. And it's free, so I'll link it down below. And so you're a mom, it is harder to get out and go to the gym sometimes. So it's a great way to fit exercise into your daily life that's a little bit easier and more manageable to do. So I just feel like it's really important overall for your mental health as a mom and your physical appearance and your confidence. I would also recommend doing one thing per day or at least one thing per week that's just for you that makes you feel pretty. For me, those things are every Saturday night I paint my fingernails for the next week. And while we watch a movie together, my husband and I, I'll paint my nails and we have chips and salsa from Chili's and that's kind of my Saturday ritual. And then again with exercise, but exercising for me is one of the things that I do for me to, to just for myself pretty much every day. So those are my two things, but it could be for you, depending on your schedule and your financial ability, you could be, it could be going out to get a pedicure or a manicure. It could be going to get a massage. It could be, um, getting your hair done or something like that, going to get a spray tan, any of those things that make you feel good about yourself, going out and maybe buying a new outfit. Try to do that at once per day would be awesome, at least once per day. But if not once per day, at least once a week. Just do something that's for you. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Um, but I think that really will help to rejuvenate you and give you more confidence um, that you've taken some time to spend on yourself. Taking care of yourself is a sign to other people that you care about yourself, that you have self-respect, you value yourself, and that you matter. Just like everybody everybody in the family matters, you matter too. Also great, a great example to set for your kids. They need to know that you value yourself as a person it's because you're a mom now. Does it mean that you don't matter anymore? And does it mean you should have to brush all your needs to the wayside? You still matter. And carving that time out for yourself is a good example to show that you have self-respect and it's a good example for your kids to see. So I just think it's really important. It goes so much more, there's so much more to that than just, hey, I might look pretty because I have on new lip gloss or whatever. It's so much more than just your physical. It really does change your mood and your value of yourself when you care enough about yourself to take care of yourself. The third, um, aspect of being a confident mom is having confidence in raising your kids. And I'll just be honest with you, I don't feel confident 99% of the time in raising my kids. Just when I think I have it all figured out, my kids change their stage of life that they're in, and then I have to change, and it's just like, I, there's never a dull moment around here, just like I'm sure there's not in your household. But just, I mean, I just, I don't. I don't feel like I have it all figured out, and I'm not completely confident as a parent, just like I'm, feel, I'm sure a lot of you probably aren't either. I just try to make my kids know that they matter to me. I invest a lot of time in their lives, in all aspects of their life, um, and I just, I do the best I can for them, and that at least I do know. I also try to make sure that I spend a, a lot of time with them so that they know they matter to me and that we can have a close relationship in hopes that as they grow older, we'll still stay close. My mom and I have been best friends since as long as I can remember and you know we still are. Even though there were stages of my life that I was probably less than enjoyable to live with and to deal with, we were still friends and we, we, we got through those rough patches of, the, of time because we are best friends. And some people that say you can't be your kid's friend, I know what they mean when they say that. Like you can't worry about them getting mad at you if you're trying to teach them a lesson or you're trying to punish them and you're trying to raise them the right way. You can't worry all the time about whether or not they get mad at you. But I think you can still stay friends. My mom and I are best friends and I just feel like um, I want that with my girls. I want them to be able to consider me their friend and that we spend time together and we hang out and we do things together. The closer we are now and the closer relationship we have, I'm hoping that's going to help alleviate a lot of problems when they are teenagers and they want to tell me things. Maybe they're afraid to because I'm their parent. Maybe they will if we have that really close relationship. And then when they get older 
and get married and move away or move out, then that they'll still come home and visit me a lot, like I do my mom. And my youngest daughter says that she's gonna live with me forever. And I was like, that's fine, you can live with me forever. But I don't think she'll always feel that way. I still try to make sure that I'm investing in their lives, spending time with them and building that relationship. That doesn't change no matter what stage of life we're in, no matter which girl is having her traumatic little phase here and there. Those two things don't change. Um, making them a priority and trying to build that relationship. That's really important for me. I use the Bible and prayer to help me raise my kids. That's all I can do. I mean, there's plenty of self-help books out there and they're great. A lot of them are, some of them aren't. Um, and they're all, you know, everybody's different. Everybody parents differently, just like we do everything differently. You know, we're all different and we're not the same. Um, there are some really great books you can find, articles and all different things, but you really have to find what speaks true to your heart. And I can't think of it. There's no other book that's out there that's going to speak truer to my heart than the Bible. Since I am a Christian and I do believe in God and I believe what the Bible says, I use that to help raise my kids along with just prayer. If I didn't pray, um, uh, you know, I pray every day anyway about lots of things, but if I didn't pray specifically about my kids and my relationship with them and me trying to raise them, I don't know what I would do. I would be completely lost because I need that prayer every day to get me through. I try to remember to pray every morning. I pray every night before bed, of course, but I try to remember to pray every morning as soon as I get up to pray for patience, to, for God to give me the strength to get through the day and to help me to be the godly example of what I want my kids to see, of a godly woman, of a good person, of a kind-hearted person, of a generous person. I just, I want to be more so than telling the kids what they should be doing. I want to make sure that first I am being the example that of what I should be doing. And that's not always easy because I lose my temper and I'm not perfect and I screw up all the time. But sometimes I, I notice when I remember to pray in the morning too before I even see my kids, I usually have a better outlook on the day and I'm able to approach the day, approach the day with more, um, a, more of a, a calm spirit and a more joyful spirit than just if I wake up and I'm all frazzled and I'm irritated because somebody woke me up and you know, I just try to make that time in the morning. I don't always remember, but what I do notice that when I do remember is my day seems to go a lot more smoothly. And I also do have to pray for patience. I didn't pray for patience for a long time because somebody had said, don't ever pray for patience because God will test you and make you learn a lesson about patience. And I don't want to learn a lesson about patience because I am extremely impatient. I want things done my way and I want them done like yesterday. I'm very impatient and it's a horrible flaw that I have. But I... I one day bit the bullet and I was like, okay, I'm going to pray for patience. I've got to because I was losing my temper so quickly about everything with my kids. And it is hard since we homeschool. We're together all the time. And so anybody you're with 24-7 is going to get on your nerves. And so, you know, we get on each other's nerves a lot. And there were days when I was like, I was already irritated as soon as I got up in the morning. And so I really do pray for patience now. And I think it helps. I've noticed that since I've been praying for patients over the last probably four or five months, I think I've gotten a lot more calm. I don't think it's a coincidence that that has happened because nothing else has really changed in my life. I just have made prayer a more, a bigger part of my day at different times throughout the day, not just at bedtime. I'll pray in the morning or I'll say little things here and there in my head, you know, because I really need that to get me through the day. So praying for patients is a big one for me. I also pray that um, when I have to correct my children that I will correct them in a way that reaches their heart. So they actually are able to learn from the correction versus them just thinking she's mad at me and I'm mad at her. And and actually they can think about and reflect on what they really did. And sometimes that's just a turn of a phrase. You know, what you say to one kid might not reach another kid the same way because all the kids are different. And so I pray that God will make me the mother that each girl needs me to be. They're very different. They have different styles. They have different feelings. I have one that's really sensitive and I have one that is strong as an ox. <laughs> and so I have to try to um, teach them a little differently and correct them a little differently when necessary. And so I pray that God will help me to know what to say to each child so that I can really speak to them and they will actually hear me instead of just thinking, she's mad and I'm going to cry. And now, you know, if that makes any sense, that's a, I think that's a really good one to pray for because we do have to, to handle each child differently. They're not cookie cutter children just because they're all yours. They're not all the same. They have different needs and different temperaments and different sensitivities and they need to hear things different ways. 
So I do pray for that as well. We all feel bad about things that go on with our kids throughout the day. Try not to focus on the times that you messed up. Try to focus on the things that you did right. Any, and that's that really speaks true about anything, not just about being a competent mom. It's about anything, about being a wife or a, an employee or just a person. You know, if you sit there and think, well, I did this and I ate too many carbs at lunch and then I cut some guy off on the freeway and then I, you know, you could always add up all these things, keeping a tally list in your head of all the things you did wrong. Try to turn your brain and retrain your brain to think about all the things you did right. And in this case, in parenting, and it might not be just some big grandiose thing, you know, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be just big things. Little things matter a lot of times just as much as big things because they add up. Think about that great meal that you made them for dinner or the costume you stayed up all night the night before making for them for the school play or the little lunch note that you left in their school box. And think about all those little victories that you had as a mom throughout the day and try to make that be what you keep count of and not all the mistakes and failures you made because you're going to always be able to have those things to think about. But training your brain to think on the positive side really will motivate you and encourage you and give you more confidence as a mom instead of just thinking, well, I'm a failure. Why even bother? Tomorrow's probably going to be just as bad and I'm going to screw up tomorrow too. And you are going to screw up tomorrow because you're a person. You're, the difference, though, in how you let that affect you is if you sit there and focus on it and dwell on the bad things and the mistakes that you made, or are you going to think about the positive things and encourage the encouraging things and move yourself forward? And our rewards and our validation that we're doing something right is when we see our kids do something great. And there's, you know, all different things. So don't, don't just focus on the things that you did right in the day. Think about all the things that your kids did right. Did they get sent home from school with a note from the teacher that said, hey, you know, Susan was great today and she shared with her friend or so-and-so helped somebody that fell down on the playground, things like that. I mean, there's my girls, I'm so proud of them. They do lots of amazing things. I think some of the things that stick out in my head most recently is when we were at Disney World, my oldest daughter found a $20 bill laying on the ground. And you know, you're at Disney World, so there's people everywhere and she could have just easily pocketed it, but there was a little boy standing next to her and she said, hey, and she was, it was, she was all excited. Like, you could see the look on her face. We were kind of standing off to the side a little bit. And you could see the look on her face. Like, she was so excited. And then she looked over and saw this kid standing there. And she goes, um, excuse me, is this your 20? And, of course, he checks his pockets. And I don't know. We still have kind of an argument in the family about whether or not we really think it was his. He said it was his, and she gave it to him. Whether or not it really was and whether or not he was being honest, I don't know. We'll never know. But the fact was, she did the right thing. And... Here, I mean, $20 for a kid at Disney World, that could get you something kind of decent. And she, instead of keeping it for herself, she did the right thing and she offered it to see if it was his. And so I thought that was pretty awesome. So my husband went into, after she did that, he got in his wallet and gave her a 20. <laughs> so, I mean, she kind of still got an extra bonus out of it, but she didn't know that was going to happen. So that was a great choice that she made. I know when she was in public school, I've had some of the other kids that were like new kids to the school year, their moms would tell me, I'm so glad that we have your daughter here because, um, you know, she took my daughter under her wing and my daughter, my daughter didn't have any friends and so your daughter sat with her at lunch or played with her on the playground and things like that. And she does that kind of stuff all the time. When she meets kids out places, she invites them to church. I know with my grandmother, when she made her a birthday card, she wrote a Bible verse in my grandmother's birthday card and she's also taken it upon herself to memorize the book of Genesis. I don't know how far she'll get in it. She knows more of it now than I do. Things like that where she is, all the things that I have tried to instill in her, that my husband and I have tried to instill in her, are coming out in little bits and pieces and if you don't notice those little bits and pieces they could slip you by but try to think about and focus on those things. With my youngest daughter, I know recently my dad took her to a local like pizza arcade place and my oldest daughter was with my parents, and so it was just my dad and my youngest daughter. And she'd earned all these tickets and points, and she, you know, you get to go to the little thing at the end where you can spend all your tickets on little frogs and silly putty and all this junk that they have. <laughs> but she spent almost every single token that she had, like you know, every single ticket she had on somebody else in the family. I think she only got one thing for herself, and she made pictures. And she got like little prize dolphins for everybody. I mean, it was the sweetest thing my dad said to watch her spend almost every single ticket she earned on somebody else and having that generous spirit. And so that was really sweet. And she's always making cards for people and trying to make them feel better. I've had people come to us, up to us in restaurants and stuff and say, your girls are so well behaved and so kind to each other. And I'm like, yes, I've done something right. So let those little moments be not only a great source of, um, 
you know, something you should tell your kids when you notice them doing these things, these good things. They might be small, seemingly small. Make sure that you acknowledge to them that you noticed that. Hey, I saw that you were sharing with so-and-so and that was really awesome. But also in your own brain, that's kind of the tally system that you should be keeping. Let that kind of be a reflection on you. Not to take away the fact that they did those things on their own and they made those choices on their own, but also some of that, if not all of that, has a lot to do with their upbringing and how you taught them and what you've shown them and what you've displayed to them as a person. So that's your reward. That is your paycheck when it comes to raising your kids. That's how you are rewarded with your hard work and your tears and your prayers and all that stuff is those things that they do that make them good people and that's a reward for you as their mom. And I think just thinking of things that way will make you more confident in raising your kids. You're still gonna doubt yourself, that's just normal. You're still gonna worry, that's normal. But try to notice the little victories and the little things that um, that really add up to be big things. In all areas of our life, we should always be trying to, to improve and grow and learn. And um, mothering is no different. You know, the, like I said, there are the self-help books and I use the Bible a lot. I've read self-help books too about mothering and parenting and sometimes I'll get a book about like the strong-willed child or I'll get a book about how to make siblings best friends just to kind of get a new perspective. And you know, sometimes you get little tidbits here and there out of a whole book. You might get maybe two tidbits of information that's new to you that kind of strikes a chord with you. But again, for me though, the basic book is just the Bible and then praying. That's kind of my parenting guide. <laughs> really hope that this video helped you and motivated you. I will be honest, it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to say because I thought I don't necessarily feel just confident in every aspect of my life. I don't. But I think the difference is I'm always seeking to grow and improve and to learn and but to give myself grace to make mistakes and mess up and start all over again. I think that's really what gives us confidence as moms and wives and mothers is, is that we need to always try to grow and learn and improve because that growth is what we're going to be able to look back at a year from now and say, Hey, remember when, you know, I stayed in my pajamas all day? Or remember when me, I used to fight with my kids all day, but now I have improved and learned how to, to go to not do that. And that gives you confidence that moves you forward. So when I look back now, a year, a year ago, or even two or three years ago, or 10 years ago, I mean, I see how much I have improved. And that in itself gives me confidence. And we should never stop working on improving ourselves no matter how many kids we have and what else is going on, we should always be taking the time to spend on ourselves for our physical attributes and our health and our confidence in raising our kids and our confidence in taking care of our homes. There's always growth and learning to be done that we can improve upon and build confidence that way too because you are improving, you are learning, you are growing. And hopefully in all that process, you're also gaining more and more confidence as a mom and um, moms are really what makes the world go round. So the, the healthier the moms of the world are, I think the healthier the world will be. Hopefully you found this video helpful and encouraging and motivating. I really hope that you did. Please leave any comments down below for me of different things that maybe you do to build confidence in your life as a mom or just comments, thoughts, and suggestions you have for me down below. Make sure you check out Kimmy's channel. She's in her apron. She's got a great channel and I really love watching them and she's one of my favorites on YouTube. So make sure you click the link down below so that you can watch her video and make sure you subscribe to her channel as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.